Hey everyone, this is Josh. In this video, we're going to do a talking head video. I always wanted to do one of these. And so for those who have followed me along for a while now, you probably know that, you know, I've been doing Palooza development for probably almost over a year now. Not actively, of course, mostly just poking my head in and learning what's available. Gosh, if the video actually represents what I've been doing for a year, then well, probably time to find a new career. Anyways, so yeah, I've been dabbling for about a year right now. So I think that gives me some perspective that I can provide to see what's going on currently in the Cardano or Plutus ecosystem. So this will probably be one of my more controversial video. I expect some dislikes. Thank God YouTube is hiding the dislikes, so no one will ever see that. So to ease the blow of what's gonna happen, I'm going to take a sandwich approach. We're gonna start with the good news, bad news, and the good news again. And so for the first layer of the sandwich, we're going to have a disclaimer and a personal attack against myself. So yeah, uh, I'm mostly doing this on my, on my own free time, maybe one to two hours a day when I was motivated and maybe, you know, zero when I wasn't. And um, I also, for number two, haven't really developed any other smart contract languages. Plutus is actually my first ever smart contract language, so I don't have any experience developing other languages. So. This is only what I can see from my own personal experience working with web languages versus what we have right now in the Plus framework. And then finally, number three, I'm what you call a solo dev, and I rarely rely on any community or Discord channels or anything else. In fact, ever since my uh, buddy Scott has left me back holding this project for a year now, I've been pretty much trying to figure things out myself. Not the, probably the best thing to do, honestly speaking, as a developer, but you know, I'll go back to my first point. I'm only doing this in my free time. Now with that out of the way, let's actually get into the meat of the video. Problem number one, there's a high barrier to entry. So for those unfamiliar programming, Plus uses a programming language called Haskell. Now Haskell does have its benefits. It's a functional language. However, most developers actually don't learn Haskell in functional programming as their first language or or it's not taught in universities, but more popular languages are like Java, JavaScript, C, C Sharp, and things like that, or Python, can't forget Python. And the problem with Haskell is that it has a completely different paradigm compared to the other object-oriented programming style. As a result of that, it's a higher barrier to entry for developers to pick up Plutus. So not only do you have to learn the Plutus framework, you also have to wrestle with the programming language, and that makes it a lot harder. Now, of course, if you work in the language long enough, things will kind of make sense to you, but it's still a high bar that you have to pass. Now, assuming you learn Haskell, we're going to problem number two, and that is the lack of documentation for the frameworks. Now, don't get me wrong. Plutus does have a lot of documentation and examples to get started. In fact, if you look at the Plutus Playground, they have five smart contracts right there. If you look at the Plutus Pioneer program, that's a whole series of examples and learning material that you can use. But what I'm specifically talking about is, let's say we move past examples, and then we want to actually take these pieces of code and then make your own smart contract. And that's where the crux of my problems come from. I actually have to understand the function that I have to call. Uh, for example, in my last video, I looked for this uh, get UTXO greater than equal to function. I tried to find a documentation for the code, and then when I was looking for it, it led me to a 404 page. The only way that I was actually able to even find the code was that I had to look for the cache version of the documentation. Alongside of that, uh, and these were some problems I found off screen, some of the documentation was outdated. For example, when looking at the definition of a UTXO, or the UTXO map specifically, the two prem types in the map is not actually what it is today when you actually call the get UTXO greater than equal to function. So not the most ideal. You might actually be able to work around it, but nonetheless, it's still annoying that you have to dig around and find it. Ideally, what I like to see is more comprehensive documentation along with maybe some examples, but what I really want and need is just up-to-date documentation, which might be hard uh, today where Cardano and Plutus is constantly evolving. So it's something that time will solve. So that's problem number two. And then moving on to problem number three, debugging and even understanding what data structures and what's happening is very painful. And when I mean painful, I mean, you can't even do it on certain points. 
For those following my previous videos, you know that the smart contract has two portions of it. There's the off-chain part and the on-chain part. For the off-chain part of the code, we can still do print statements that will show up on the log. And what I did in my previous video was that I just took the object that I received and then I converted it to a string and then I printed it out. And so that gives me like an idea of you know what my state is, what's my variable, and how I can interact with data to achieve what I want. And that's the way of doing it. Uh, ideally, what I would love as a developer is to be able to set breakpoints, which for those not familiar with coding, uh, breakpoints are just a, a way for developers to stop the code at that specific line of code that you're writing, and you get to explore the environment at that specific line of code. And then, and then you get to progress through the code line by line to see what your code is doing to all the other variables or the state of the smart contract. Now, unfortunately, we don't get that. And the best we can do is print statement debugging, which is, you know, fine, not the end of the road. However, my biggest problem comes to the on-chain code. And on the on-chain code, you actually can't even do a print statement. The closest you could get is have these trace if false helper code, where if a expression exp uh, evaluates to false, then you get to print out some message and that's it. I was able to find a um, GitHub issue you can see right here that talks about uh, asking for a request to add support for this. And then if you continue digging down into the request, you'll see that there's another issue and the card the Plus team basically said that they have other higher priorities, maybe Hydra or getting PABs ready. So I understand, but it's just frustrating that, um, you know, these common developer tools, is just not available to us. And then finally, problem number four, it's painful to set up and deploy a smart contract. And that being said, I've actually never even gone to the point of deploying, but for those following my previous videos, you know, that I work on a windows machine. And to deploy smart contracts, you need a Linux or maybe even a Mac environment. Now there are solutions around it where you could install a WSO instance, which I've done in some of my old videos where you install Linux on your machine, and then you can deploy your Pluto smart contract. However, that's just a lot of work involved. If you looked at those videos and you looked at the comments, um, sorry, apologies for those people who I might not sure reply back to. But there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of work in getting that set up. Ideally, it'd be just great if we just had native support or built-in support to even just to write and deploy Pluto smart contracts. And so overall, if I can summarize the problems and issues I see with Plutus, it's that it's not the most developer friendly language, which I'll explain later uh, why it's probably not a big deal. And then there's lack of documentation and developer support overall uh, in terms of just being able to debug your code and just, and developing and deploying your contract. Now hold up and keep your fingers away from that dislike button. Yes, there are many problems right now, like we just discussed, but there are also solutions coming up and hopefully one day, and they will help address all the things that I've talked about. So addressing my first complaint when working with Haskell. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that we're working in Haskell. Like the language itself is, you know, at the end of the day, just another language, another tool that you have to learn. It's not a big deal. Um, it, it might be hard, it might be different, but uh, at the end of the day, the concepts are still there. It's, it's a learnable skill. Now, for those who aren't interested or don't want to, or can't maybe wrap their mind and give up, there are other solutions coming in. Uh, for example, there are EVMs and um, other solutions, uh, Glow being a big one. And what they do is they t allow you to write any other languages like Java or JavaScript or C, Python maybe, and, and it will transcribe your code into Haskell and specifically into Pluto Smart Contract. I even heard talks of being able to convert Solidity, uh, which is the language for Ethereum smart contract and change the Solidity contract into an, a Plutus smart contract. So that's powerful and that will address a lot of the problems I have with Haskell. But of course, in the current state of Plutus, that is not available, so we'll have to suffer through Haskell. But hey, you'll learn you a good Haskell. And point number two about Haskell is that it 
you know, while it is harder to learn just because of how uncommon it is, you know, every language has its purposes. And the reason that Plutus chose Haskell in the first place, it's that it's a functional programming language where your outcome is pretty much predetermined. Specifically, what I mean by that is there's no states involved in the code that you work with, which is a common problem in object oriented programming, where you, if you, for example, have a function or a code that you write, you give it two inputs, the output might not necessarily be the same for the same two inputs. Now in Haskell, that is guaranteed. Every two inputs that you put in, you are guaranteed that same output. And this is very good for writing um, high security enterprise grade applications where you want to make sure that your smart contract works. Things like banks. You don't want your smart contract to mess up and accidentally withdraw more money that you put in, for example. So this is why having something like Haskell is good. It helps developers ensure that what you put in and what you get out is always the same. Now to basically kind of bucket all of the other problems, uh, problems two, three, and four together into one solution. We're still very early days on in Plutus development and generally smart contracts as a whole. There's so much that the Cardano team has to do right now. I think Hydra is the big one right now to make the ecosystem scalable. So yeah, uh, sacrifices and trade-offs have to be made and unfortunately documentation and dev experience will probably be one of them. Of course, like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of great resources available, maybe in online and Discord and Telegram groups, which I honestly was never a part of, but this is just my experience and perspective. And then point number four, and this is not necessarily a solution for developers, but to keep the worries of us ADA holders at bay. So at the end of the day, yes, there is a high barrier to entry, but that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, maybe it sucks for you know independent developers like myself who just isn't fully committed but just wanted to play around. Um, I'm sure there are probably easier ways to spend my lonely evenings. But for those serious developers and for those who are motivated to complete a project, this is a opportunity for you to actually go out there and create a high quality application without any competition. I remember watching a uh, video by Charles Hoskinson about, I can't remember which one, maybe the, maybe it was the one with the, about the island, the pond, the lake, um, but Nintendo, the game company, uh, they have a, you know, their own custom made language for their console and it was difficult, but they do have all the users. So if you, a developer, want to have a ecosystem where there are hungry users ready to, you know, use dabs, then they're going to have to go through all the pain and learning to ramp up and find and develop a application. And what this enforces essentially is that while there might be less dApps in the Cardano ecosystem, each dApp will actually be far higher quality. I like to think of it kind of like the app store. You know, if you go to the app store, you'll see most of the, the top 10 apps will be dominated by you know, big companies, you know, Facebook or Meta now, I guess you call them, um, Twitter, uh, and that creates a good experience for the end user, the ADA holders, but maybe not so good for uh, you know the solo or small developers that want to just make a fun app. But you know, I might argue that if you make a fun little, you know, just like my basic guessing game app that I seem to have developed like two, three times over and over, chances are those apps wouldn't be very popular anyways and would have never really succeeded in the app store. So what a high barrier entry really does it just basically adds a quality filter that blocks out any low quality, quick clone work that might appear. So my quick summary of all of this, yes, current development experience is probably not the best, but Ada is strong, Ada is holding, Ada will be most likely exist in the future. And as a result, there is a giant ecosystem that's ripe for people to develop apps for. And it's only those people who are serious, like people who want to develop games for Nintendo, as an example, will be the ones that will put in the effort to create an application that will be used on the Cardano ecosystem. However, also over time, I do expect documentation and more support tools to come out. I expect um, Glow and other uh, toolings that help you transcribe your code into Haskell to come out too, and that will help lower the barrier to entry for the developers. But it's just right now that it's not there, 
we're just currently at a growing phase right now where it's tough for you know small developers such as myself but for those who persist i'm sure the rewards will be bountiful and so that basically wraps up my thoughts about working in the Plutus framework right now and what the developer experience is currently like. Um, it is rough. I, I can't deny that. But I do believe in the future, maybe one to two years from now, uh, more support will be there. And we'll be able to see the evolution of more dApps in the Cardinal ecosystem. But until then, stay hungry, keep learning, join those resource groups that I failed to do so and ask questions and then continue learning. Uh, the cavalry will be on their way. It just might take a while. So that's my perspective. Happy development, and I'll see you all in the next video.